Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today we're going to be discussing selling in healthcare. Now, the irony is not lost on me that as a physician, it is odd that I'm talking about selling. But I will tell you, as the Chief Medical Officer of Compass Professional Health Services, and as one of its co-founders, one of my primary jobs at Compass was like as the sales guy. And so at Compass, we had over 2,000 employer clients with many major national accounts like T-Mobile and Southwest Airlines. The majority of our groups like were between like 200 and 2,000 employees. So kind of like mid-market, fully insured and self-funded employers was kind of like our bread and butter. And I would sit down with the broker benefit consultant, with HR and the head of benefits and the CFO and the CEO. And I literally had thousands of meetings over the 10 plus years that Compass was in existence. And guess what? When I started out as a salesperson, I was horrible. Like it was awful if you actually saw it yourself. But over time, I learned and I learned and I learned and I learned and I learned a few things. So I wanted to share those with you today, specifically as they pertain to healthcare. Okay, first off, there's this thing called a sales funnel. Of course, all of you probably know that, right? It can be divided up into many ways, but I will just divide it up into prospecting, pitching, and closing. And there's some very specific ways to think about each one of these three segments. Okay, first up, in regards to prospecting, I follow a guy named Aaron Ross, and he wrote a book called Predictable Revenue, and he wrote another book called From Impossible to Inevitable, and he is fantastic. He basically created the entire um, lead generation and sales process for Salesforce.com. I mean, this guy is a genius. Now, he says in prospecting, which is getting leads, that there's three ways to do it. There's nets, seeds, and spears. Okay, so nets, just like it sounds, is when you're gathering large numbers of leads. It's typically through inbound marketing. So it's typically through, you're putting out blog posts, you're putting out videos, you're putting out advertisements, you're doing conferences, etc. And people come to you expressing interest. Maybe even they come to the website and say, hey, I'm interested in XYZ. Okay, so Nets is one of the three ways to get leads. Now the conversion rate of Nets is typically very low. So the number of Nets that go from prospecting down to pitching, just know that that's going to be the lowest of these different categories. Okay, now seeds are relationships that you or people on your sales team have planted in the past. Think of them as your LinkedIn contacts that you actually have a relationship with. And I will say that fostering those seeds and just constantly meeting people. So I would go to conferences, not to try to like pitch compass at all. I would go to conferences just to like meet people and plant, you know, planting seeds. I'm like, hey, who are you? What do you do? Because people at conferences always want to talk about what they're doing. They really don't want to listen to what you're doing. And so I would just give them an opportunity to tell me about what it is that they're doing. And I would like sincerely have interest in it. And it would come to like all sorts of like various things down the road. So the important thing about seeds is that seeds, while they tend to have higher conversion rates, they tend to take a long time, as you can imagine, a long time to grow and actually turn into something that goes on to pitching. Okay, and lastly, we have spears. So that's where you're like directly hunting for a specific lead. I've, you know, you as a salesperson have identified XYZ person at ABC company and you're going to contact them. Now, I will tell you in form of spears, one of the most important things to do is to actually call them, to use this thing called the telephone. Now I will tell you in this day and age, almost nobody answers the phone. So just know that the vast majority of time this will be an exercise in leaving voicemails. But that's okay, because what you're going to do is you're going to email them as well, and you're going to do an email and a phone call on the same day. And that phone call is going to reference your email. Now, I won't get into the details about how you write the email, blah, 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 but the fact that so few people call these days, the fact that you actually call and do leave a voice well will make you unique. Now, the key here with Spears is that their initial like re reply rate is just super low. So this is just an exercise in failure, right? And so this is where, listen, if you can connect with three out of 10 people, then you're going to make it to the Hall of Fame, right? So it, just know that you're going to get the door slammed in your face a gazillion times. And that's okay. That's part of the deal. Okay, so then we move on to the next part of the funnel where your leads have moved their way into actually wanting to have like a conversation of, hey, I want to learn about whatever service or product it is that you have. Okay, now, there are different buyers. Now, this is the Miller-Hyman approach to sales, and I think it is very apropos to 
um, to the uh, complex business to business sale that is oftentimes found in healthcare. And here you have the three different buyers. You have the economic buyer, you've got the user buyer, and you've got the technical buyer. The economic buyer is typically in the C-suite, so the CEO or the CFO, and they're the ones who are literally going to be writing the check. And they're looking at what is the dollar value of what you're providing vis-a-vis -vis the cost, vis-a-vis -vis the other budgetary priorities that I have, okay? So it's important when you're talking to these people that you talk in terms of numbers and value and budget. Okay, next up is the, uh, is the user buyer. Now the user buyer is actually getting like the use or the value out of the product or service. So if you're selling an insurance carrier service or a point solution or you know what have you, the user here is actually not the end employee because the person who's buying your service is actually not the user buyer. Who's the user buyer is? It's HR and the people who work in benefits at that company. Depending upon the size of the company, it could be one and the same. Okay, so that's the user buyer. And so it's very important for them to talk about outcomes. What will be the benefits that come from this particular healthcare solution, whether it be better health, fewer days of absenteeism, decreased musculoskeletal claims, uh, improvement in hemoglobin A1C levels of, your, of the employees. So there's a gazillion, but that's what they're going to be interested in. And then lastly, you have the technical buyer. And the technical buyer is the one who's literally going to be interacting with you, whether it be on a daily or a weekly basis. They're the ones who are going to have to do like implementation of the program. They're the ones who have to go and do like on, ongoing like servicing of the program. So oftentimes employers will, will outsource a lot of this technical buyer service and that's where the broker benefit consultant uh, comes in. So oftentimes the broker benefit consultant or like maybe a, a medium or a lower level benefits manager will actually be the technical buyer. They want to know the nitty gritty of, listen, how easy or difficult is this to actually do or use? So it's very important to think about this framework. And here's where it gets really interesting. You can be in one meeting where you will have all three of these different buyers in the same meeting. So you literally need to tailor your pitch in the same meeting in different ways, depending upon who you're talking to at various points in the meeting. And guess what that is called? Hard. That is a very difficult thing to do. Like I would come out of these meetings and I would be dripping with sweat. Like I feel like I would have lost like five pounds, like my stomach would be churning. I mean, it is hard. Okay, then lastly, we come to closing. And this is a model from a book called Hope Is Not A Strategy about complex business to business sales. It's a rather old book. Man, this thing, this thing is awesome. You gotta read this thing. It's very thin, paperback, I love this book. Okay, and basically here, you have what is important to a buyer over time. So T is time and we have a little graph here. So what's most important at the beginning is fit. Is the service that you're offering, does it fit their particular problem, what they need? And you gotta get that, I don't even wanna say out of the way first, you have to sort of win that fit battle first. And the next comes up is risk. Okay, what could go wrong? And they're gonna punch a million holes through what could possibly go wrong. Okay, where do you host your data? Do you use Amazon Web Services? Do you use a data center? What kind, you know, do you, do you have a, a uh, you know, disaster plan, you know, what are you going to do, you know, blah, 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 all these different things that could possibly happen. You have to go through those risk issues, okay? And then lastly, you get the risk issues, then finally you get to price. Okay, what are you compared to the competition? What are you compared to other similar things that I buy in this particular area? Yeah, what do I, what is the price vis-a-vis -vis our budgeting season? Okay, maybe this makes sense, but we just don't spend stuff on this stuff right now because we budget in July and we won't start spending on it until January. So really, we can't spend any money on you until six months from now. So just know that as you're talking about fit, if they start asking you risk questions, that's actually a positive buy sign. And if you're talking about fit and risk and they actually start asking you price questions, that's actually a positive buy sign. Those are good things. Those are showing you that you're progressing along this timeline. Now, everyone who's watching this video wants to make change for good. And we all need to sell. We need to sell good ideas. We need to sell new ways of doing things. Sometimes we need to actually sell products or services or even whole companies. So we all need to sell in some way, shape, or form. And here are several frameworks that I have found helpful in doing so. And thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.